So good evening, everyone. My name is Bob Garashi, and as founder and CEO, I want to welcome each of you to the 26th anniversary celebration of New Jersey Community Development Corporation. Last year, on the occasion of our 25th anniversary gala, I don't think that anyone could have predicted today's circumstances. We are now nine months into this unprecedented national crisis where nothing is normal and little seems certain. But there is one constant that I am grateful for, and that is the love and support of our donors, funders, friends, and volunteers. During this difficult time, we have asked for your continued support and your prayers as we work as hard as we can to meet the growing needs of the children and families we serve. And tonight, you will hear about the way we've transformed ourselves in order for everyone to meet the enormous challenges we've encountered. More importantly, you'll hear about our friend and partner, St. Joseph's Health, and how they have saved lives and given us all a lesson in resiliency, a lesson we need now more than ever. I founded NJCDC 26 years ago because I wanted to create an organization that would make a meaningful difference in the lives of people in need. And from that very first day, that's what we've done. And so we are committed to work hard on behalf of those who are economically disadvantaged, those who are disabled, and those who are at risk. We are proud to be a multi-service agency operating programs and services that collectively reach 4,000 children and families every day. Now, everything we do is about creating opportunities for those we serve, particularly during COVID. We raised $100,000 to distribute 400 Chromebooks to students without any other way to learn. We raised another $100,000 to distribute boxes of food and food cards to more than 1,000 local families to meet their most basic of needs. We raised $150,000 to provide grants of up to $5,000 to 30 small businesses in Patterson to help them survive. And we continue now in full swing to operate a large holiday gift drive to ensure Christmas is bright for hundreds of disadvantaged families. And we understand that holiday joy is especially important during this time of challenge and for some, this time of despair. And so in celebrating our 26th anniversary, we do so enormously privileged to serve as an instrument of hope in a community in need. But no organization has been more of a beacon of hope than tonight's honoree, St. Joseph's Health. From the moment the crisis began, they have shown an unyielding spirit to help the people of Patterson battle this awful disease. And they have done it with a commitment to this city that has characterized their role as an anchor institution in Patterson since their founding in 1867. Tonight, I am grateful for our sponsors and for your ongoing support. I'm sorry we can't offer you the wonderful food we enjoy every year, but I can offer you our deepest appreciation for your generosity. I thank tonight's underwriter, the DeLeo family, Bob and Linda and Eric. I thank our anniversary sponsor, BD. And I thank our celebration sponsors, pse and and Valley Bank. And there are so many others who have given generously, and I hope you will take a close look at tonight's journal, which I understand has been sent to you and which will make available to the community at large. Friends, I pray that next year at this time, we will all be gathered once again in a large ballroom enjoying each other's company. But until then, I leave you with my gratitude for it is your confidence that motivates my colleagues and me to do as much as we can during this national emergency. We have been forced to bend, but I can tell you that we will not break. Our community needs us. And thanks to friends like you, we will be there for them. Thank you. And now I'd like to share with you a short video about our work in response to the COVID-19 pandemic here in Patterson. Unrelatedly, I also want to acknowledge another great team, and that is the New Jersey Community Development Corporation in Patterson. You see some of its members right there, which last week distributed roughly 400, 400 
Chromebooks to students as part of a $100,000 effort to bridge the digital divide in Patterson schools and ensure that every student has the tools they will need for both in-person and remote learning. So to CEO Bob Garashian, that's Bob on the back under the baseball cap, and to the Community Development Corporation team, thank you, bless you for everything you do. Thank you, Bob. Good evening, friends. I'm David Gelman. I'm NJCDC's Interim Chief Program Officer. Tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing Miguel Ruiz. Miguel is a young man from Patterson, a graduate of many of our youth development programs, including the Patterson Youth Council, a leadership program. Youth Care is a public health initiative with Robert Wood Johnson and NJHI, and the Great Falls Youth Corps operated in partnership with the National Park Service. Miguel was also Passaic County Community College's valedictorian of the class of 2020. He received his associate's degree in liberal arts and humanities with highest honors and has the distinction of taking more honors classes than any other student in PCCC history. That's in PCCC history. Miguel is now a student at Rutgers University and I'm so glad he can be here virtually tonight to tell you a little bit more about himself and his journey. Let's welcome Miguel Ruiz. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks, Dave, for that wonderful introduction. Um, once again, my name is Miguel Ruiz. I'm a 20-year-old Pattersonian uh, studying at Rutgers University, Newark. And tonight, I just want to tell you how NJCDC truly made me who I am today. Um, there has been no more significant organization that has supported me and help build the man I am today than NJCDC. From the very beginning of my freshman year at Garrett Morgan Academy up on Grand Street, um, I was shy, I was nervous about a new environment, wondering where I would fit in and doubting if I had the potential to become someone great. And that all changed the moment I had my first encounter uh, with NJCDC at the Great Falls Teen Center, uh, which is located right inside my high school. Um, and that was an after school program that gave me a safe haven with unique, um, wise, and kind mentors, and a wide variety of other programs within it. Uh, it helped me stay on track and motivated me in high school. Um, without NJCDC, my entire life path would be completely different. Uh, I would never have gotten to meet some fantastic staff um, or bonded with friends at the teen center, and I would have never have learned the value of service and fellowship within it. Um, so I really do think, and uh, you know, uh, really thank the contribution of the teen center for that. And then what I perceived was a simple after school program turned into a chain reaction of me joining other programs and initiatives within the organization, all while still in high school. And that all began with the Great Falls Youth Corps. 
And what started off as a summer job working for NJCDC in partnership with the National Park Service at the Patterson Great Falls National Historical Park turned to be the best summer I ever had in my life, at least so far. Uh, I was grateful to be able to work with park rangers, learn valuable soft and hard skills at the age of 15, bond with the team of peers, and even fly out to Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California, a, a state I'd never been to before. Uh, and just from the Great Falls Youth Program alone, uh, alone uh, I learned the real value of hard work and meaningful experiences. Now I have the pleasure of serving back uh, the Great Falls Youth Corps Program as a full Park Service Ranger working at the Patterson Great Falls National Historical Park. So thank you NJCC and th uh, thank you the Great Falls Youth Corps. Um, after the Great Falls Youth Corps, I transitioned to serve in the Patterson Youth Council, another NJCDC program that allows Patterson youth to be civic ambassadors uh, and become more involved with public service and local issues that concern the people of the city. Um, fighting for clean water, meeting distinguished individuals like Senators Cory Booker and Bob Menendez and Congressman Bill Pascrell in Washington, D.C., advocating for human rights and, and above all, having the opportunity to do this with amazing peers, which led to unforgettable moments like planting a tree on Capitol Hill in memory of the beloved late Senator Frank Lattenberg. And while I do not have a favorite program, considering all programs in NJCDC are outstanding, um, one, pro, um, one area in service, the Great Falls Youth Center next to John F. Kennedy High School with the same exceptional qualities as the previous programs I was a part of brought back a refreshing spirit of recreation and pure joy. Um, with activities and mentors, we could enjoy some video games, play some basketball, and even participate in the extracurricular workshops like learning how to code or even just getting assistance with homework. It was definitely a place worth stopping by after school. And if it wasn't for NJCDC and the Youth Center, I would have not gotten so good at ping pong. So thank you once again, NJCDC for that. Um, and I'm just listing off because I just wanna see every, uh, hopefully show everyone what tremendous opportunities were given to me by NJCDC. Um, I wanna thank everyone within the organization and also that I had the pleasure of meeting through its programs. Um, to every mentor and AmeriCorps member, I thank you very much. And special thanks to Dave Gelman, who introduced me prior, for working hard and always being a phone call away. Uh, you're the man, Dave, really are. <laughs> and Bob Grashi, um, uh, who created a humbling and impactful organization and guided a once clueless teenage boy from Patterson into more extraordinary things. If only you can grasp the amount of gratitude and appreciation I have for everyone at NJCDC and you, Bob, for all that was contributed towards my future. So once again, thank you, NJCDC. I hope everyone here stays healthy, keep working hard, and God bless. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Miguel. Very, very well said. I hope you know we're, we're extremely proud of you and your success, um, and we'll continue to push you. We have high expectations for you, so we can't wait to see what you do next. Um, I have the pleasure I'd like to now introduce another extraordinary young person, Amaya Perez. Amaya, also a Patterson native, is a fellow alum of our Patterson Youth Council and a former president, no less. She's now a sophomore at the University of Pennsylvania. Up until the spring of 2018, Amaya didn't really see herself as a future Ivy League student. I, I don't know that a lot of Patterson youth do. But through our Patterson Youth Council, she participated in trips like a regional Ivy League tour, during which she visited Harvard and Yale, as well as MIT. And it was then that she realized that she too could be an Ivy League student, why not her? Um, but I will let her tell you a little bit more about that herself. So let's please welcome Amaya Perez. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me, right? Like, yes. it's all good. If you ever heard me talking before, that was my grandmother asking me if I want to go eat. Everybody's grandmother is like, hey, you want to go eat? And <laughs> so it was a little funny moment if you ever heard my little interruption earlier. But good evening, everyone. I am honored, here, honored to be here today and share my story as NJCDC holds its virtual anniversary celebration. As a Patterson Youth Council member and a member of the NJCDC community ever since my junior year, can't believe I'm saying junior year of high school. The experiences I've had ranging from our Ivy League tour 
to Harvard and Yale, as well as MIT, to hosting mayoral candidate forums, to helping with community service events, and much more have honestly changed my life. And I know this seems exaggerated, but let's picture the narrative of too many students living in Patterson. Low income, low opportunity, limited resources, and fewer than 11% of adults in Patterson have a bachelor's degree. NJCDC has given me the opportunity to dream big, has allowed me to switch up the narrative and be ahead of the game in my college applications because let's face it, grades aren't everything. I've gained hours of volunteering, involve involvement in local politics, $2,500 in college scholarships via NJCDC's senior send-off ceremony for Patterson students starting college, and most importantly, the freedom to take initiative in my city as a team. All of this has contributed to my success, including my acceptances to many prestigious universities such as Columbia University and the University of Pennsylvania. I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Pennsylvania and the experiences I've gained and earned with NJCDC, especially those with I've, who I've worked with the community have helped me gain a perspective as an aspiring nurse. Once again, thank you so much for listening to my story and for your support of NJCDC. And I hope everybody has a great night. Thanks so much, Amaya. Um, and I'll pass it to Mr. Curtis Palmore. And I just wanted to say, Amaya, thank you. Thank you so much as well. As you know, we're incredibly proud of you. We're grateful to you. And we're grateful that you haven't forgotten about us um, and that you, you continue to come back and support NJCDC. And we can't wait to see what you'll do next. And uh, I'll now pass it on to Mr. Curtis Palmore. Great. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Amaya. Good evening. I'm Curtis Palmore. Um, I'm really um, just happy to share that students like Miguel and Amaya um, are just so inspiring for all the students that we serve at Community Charter School of Patterson. Uh, and JCDC actually founded uh, Community Charter School of Patterson in 2008, um, where I serve as the CEO of the organization. And uh, Amaya and I also have something in common. We're both students at the University of Pennsylvania, where I'm working towards my doctorate. Um, what I began um, at CCSP in 2017, I quickly learned about an extraordinary student by the name of Hector Otero. Um, teachers, students, um, and leaders all flock towards this young man. Um, he, Hector is an accomplished musician, um, and he's really developed his passion for music through a great partnership that we have with the Patterson Music Project. Um, and I am really um, happy that through the work that he's done with the Patterson Music Project and Estima, El Estima has inspired him to continue um, with his work. He's now a sophomore at the Passaic County Technical Institute and I'm honored tonight to introduce Hector Otero. I think, uh, Christina, you're on mute. There you go. Are we good? Yes. All right, good. All right, thank you for that wonderful and flattering introduction, Mr. Palmore. Um, as you may know already, my name is Hector Otero. I'm 14 years old. I am a sophomore at the State County Technical Institute. And today I came here to this Zoom meeting. I would usually say came to this gala, but unfortunately, due to COVID and all those restrictions that we have to do to stay safe and stay cozy in our little houses so that we're perfectly fine with each and every one of us. We have to stay in Zoom meeting, but it's perfectly fine. But, um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Anyways, um, I would just like to thank the NJCDC for quickly just one, founding the school that I grew up in from kindergarten to eighth grade and got passed to the PCTI with. Um, funded the Patterson Music Project, which is something that I could talk to for hours and hours. Opportunities like NJ Pat. Playing with, I think, the New Jersey um, Youth Orchestra, New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, New York Philharmonic, 
going over to LA to play with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, see the Los Angeles Philharmonic, go to the Hollywood Bowl, and all these other programs, such as the program that in Connecticut that I keep on forgetting the name of, but it's close to my heart, promise. And all of this, if you haven't noticed, have all started from one company, and that company was the foundation of the school that I go to, of the program that I attend music with, of all the opportunities that I've been able to get, of all the scholarships, wait, no, not scholarships yet, <laughs> for all the wonderful um, invitations to many, many different schools, some of which that I can choose from, but we chose, thankfully. And yeah, overall, I just wanna say a big thank you to the NGCDC for being a part of my life this time, whether it was directly or indirectly your presence in here <laughs> and today i'm going to be playing to you guys two songs one is rather be by clean bennett featuring just Klein, and the other one is going to be a variation of jingle bells hope you all enjoy let's see if i can work this <laughs> uh, a little bit of issues there you go <laughs> Thank you. 
Mike. Thank you. Uh, just needed to be unmuted. Thank you, Hector. That was amazing. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Cassidy, NJCDC's Director of Planning and Real Estate. When NJCDC was founded in 1994, we did our work throughout the entire city of Patterson. But about 10 years ago, we decided that we could have a greater impact if we focused on a defined neighborhood. We now focus our work in a neighborhood we call the Great Falls Promise Neighborhood. It's 95 city blocks with the Great Falls at its center and 8,000 children live or go to school within our neighborhood. We've put together this short video uh, so that you can learn a little bit more about the Great Falls Promise Neighborhood. Thank you. I was in a bad relationship. It was abusive. And then I ended up homeless. I started seeing a psychiatrist and he helped me to get in here. They, he sent me to an interview on Spruce Street and then I, I was lucky enough to get this apartment. I've been here for a long time now, you know, just this experience and JCD has to offer for young kids. This has been a great experience for me. Uh, it taught me about life and life in general. Like, it just taught me so much. With our residential programs, we basically support three di distinct populations. We support youth ages 16 to 21 in our Independence House and adolescents ages 18 to 21 in our Elm Street apartments. In our Hawthorne Heights and Supported Living Program, we support individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And in our Supportive Housing Programs, we support individuals who were formerly chronically homeless who also have a mental health diagnosis. The programs always have big holiday celebrations because the individuals were formerly homeless. Some of them don't have families. Our youth, particularly, they're aging out of the foster care system, so they may or may not have contact with their families, so holiday celebrations are important to us. So we make sure that every holiday they have family-style uh, holidays. We had staff, they were, they were something because there were times where, you know, I didn't have money or food or they'd be like, you know, we'll take you food shopping, you know, that's fine, we can do that for you. You know, because when you first get here, you don't have everything together. You don't have everything together, you know, you, know, you, you don't have a job. You know, certain people had jobs when they got here. I didn't have a job. It's been different for me. I work now. I work at uh, Garden State Mall, do security. But the staff here has really, they really, really bond. We bonded. Right? They are really inspiring. You know, inspired me. I suffer with depression, anxiety, and all that. So, um, with me living here, I was more like at peace and at calmness, and I didn't have that worry and be stressing all the time. And then I was able to get my children back into my life because my children. They were very upset about me being, you know, homeless. So now they came back into my life. Whoever comes in this apartment, they will feel, I want them to feel the most love, because that's why I had love. Uh, I bought love in here, you know. Okay. Well, I have a choice. <clears throat> I could tell you that we showed the wrong video, or I could not. But that was, uh, that was actually not the right video. Um, we have a different one to show you about the work that we're doing in the neighborhood. But I think we can cheat because we talked about a number of our services, our residential services, and guess what? Most of them are here in the neighborhood. So I'm gonna call that even. Um, if we had showed the, the, the correct video, which we'll show in a couple of minutes, you would have already met the person that I'm going to introduce, but you'll get to meet her first. Uh, her name is Tiffany Shepard. Um, Tiffany is somebody who is body and soul committed to this neighborhood where we do all of our work. Um, we understand that we can only make lasting change uh, for those we serve by working hand in hand with neighborhood residents like Tiffany. And so I'd like you to help me welcome Tiffany. Tiffany, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bob Garasi, for that introduction. And thank you again and to the NJCDC team for making tonight possible. Congratulations for 26 years. It really is an honor to speak amongst all you beautiful souls. I wish I could just shout you out individually, but I know we don't have time for that. 
Again, my name is Tiffany Shepard, and I am a longtime resident, mother, educator in the great city of Patterson. I've lived in the Great Falls neighborhood for 18 years. I know I only look 18, but I'm older than that. And NJCDC has positively impacted me and my life for 16 of those 18 years. In 2002, the NJCDC was moving into the neighborhood the same time I was moving in. And I love to help others. So I was excited that there was nonprofit so close to home that I could get involved with. I was working in New York City at the time and I found myself there more than I was in New Jersey. However, in the next five years, I did manage to volunteer in various ways with NJCDC from neighborhood cleanups and beautification projects to going door to door informing area residents of various community events hosted by the NJCDC. Now, unfortunately, tragedy hit when in 2007, I found out I was going to be a single mom. Because I spent most of my time in New York, I hadn't really made friends at home or bonded with my neighbors. But one day I get a flyer in the mail about the NJCDC hosting a baby shower party for pregnant moms. Now I was a little skeptical, <laughs> but I went anyway. And let me tell you, once I arrived, I was so glad that I came. There were information tables, food, prizes, and you know, that's the NJCDC staple, food and prizes. So that's how I started it out. And I learned so much about myself, my pregnancy, and being a first time mom. Then a raffle was drawn and I won a stroller car seat combo. I was super excited about that because of that NJCDC event. I finally started feeling a bit better about my situation. Now the years that followed up into this very moment tonight, the NJCDC has blessed me in so many ways. I've had meaningful community conversations as a cab member, as a mother, my daughter, Milan Shepard, and she's on here tonight, has enjoyed an excellent education at the Community Charter School of Patterson, where she started in kindergarten and she is now a seventh grader. Oh my goodness. And she's also had many community service opportunities as well. I'm so proud of her. As an educator, my students have taken refuge in a lot of NJCDC programs where many of them have lived in the Independence House. Many of them have participated in the Junior Youth Build. Many of them have participated in the Youth Council and many more passed their time away at the Youth Center. I have even held a few positions at NJCDC where I have been community outreach coordinator, uh, lead teacher for both the after school program and the summer program at CCSP and site leader. You know, even in the midst of a global pandemic that has sent many barricading themselves indoors, the NJCDC was out giving away Chromebooks so students could learn remotely, passing out food to families, including giving 500 families Thanksgiving meals, supplying small businesses um, with grants so that they can maintain and sustain, all the while still doing the work to improve the aesthetics of the neighborhood. Thank you, NJCDC, for all you do. Thank you for listening and may God bless you and may God keep you and your families safe and healthy. Thank you, Tiffany. We, 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 we love you. We love your passion. So thank you for those wonderful remarks. Um, there's somebody else who I think you'll also agree when you hear Josh in a moment um, is just extraordinary in so many different ways uh, in his passion and in, and in terms of his story and um, what he's been able to overcome in his life with the support of our residential program led by Robin Murray um, and all of the staff, I should say, in our residential program, who as essential employees have been working tirelessly since the start of this pandemic, showing up each and every day to make sure that our residents like Josh 
are able to get the services that they absolutely need in order to thrive. Uh, but no one can tell his story better than himself. And so it's my pleasure and privilege, privilege to introduce to you uh, Josh Copeland. Josh? Thank you, Bob. Um, that was a beautiful introduction. Uh, this is a lot different. You know, I'm usually used to the galas, the food and everything else, but uh, I'm just very thankful that I was invited to uh, share a little bit about my story, my interaction with NJCDC. Um, so basically anybody who doesn't know me, because I've spoken before at um, NJCDC functions, um, I, uh, I got diagnosed with MS when I was 22. And uh, through a course of events, um, I can only explain it's tragic. I uh, started getting prescribed pain medication and instantly transitioned into doing heroin. Uh, I'd grown up in Ramsey, I had a good education, decent family, and I ended up homeless in Patterson for five years. Uh, I was living underneath the bridge uh, right on Route 19 and right on Grand Street. And I was there for a very long time, kind of stuck in this continuous cycle. And um, <clears throat> basically after getting arrested a bunch, I decided uh, to try to get clean. And in 2013, I went to a hospital and went through detox, went through rehab and tried to get away from Patterson. And um, unfortunately, when I got released, the only place that would take me was uh, a shelter in Patterson. And once I was there, I ended up going to meetings at the recovery center at Eva's Village, another local nonprofit organization. And um, <clears throat> while I was there, I was basically, uh, I had a, <clears throat> I had a ICMS, an independent case management service recommended. I tried to file for the housing first initiative in Patterson. And uh, that was my first introduction to NJCDC. And uh, <clears throat> about when I had about a year clean, I got an apartment on Spruce, uh, on Spruce Street, Spruce Terrace, and I've been a resident ever since. And um, I had a lot of support from them, um, getting a place and furniture and everything. And it was definitely the first time I felt safe uh, here in Patterson. And uh, ironically, I have the only front facing second floor apartment that overlooks the bridge. I used to live under across the street actually. And uh, I immediately tried to figure out what I was gonna do because I didn't have to worry about it. it was, I squandered a lot of opportunities when I was younger and I knew right away that this was an opportunity to go back to school and try to get an education. And I had been out of high school for 13 years. I graduated in 2002. Uh, in 2015, I uh, applied to Pase County Community College. I graduated with a um, <clears throat> two year in uh, English and I immediately qualified to go to uh, a bunch of schools. I had a 3.825 GPA and uh, I decided to go to William Patterson. I just graduated in 2020 with a bachelor's in English with the highest honors um since then i have just been trying to figure out what i'm going to do uh, unfortunately because of my ms i ended up having to go back to physical therapy but thank god they just put in a sports med a physical therapy place right across the street so i go to physical therapy twice a week and um, i still have my beautiful apartment and in today's times it's very important um, to have a place where you feel safe and that's what NJCDC has done for me. Uh, NJCDC has afforded me great opportunities. Uh, I got to go to the Capitol and speak about uh, affordable housing, which is very important. I never would have been able to um, keep the sobriety that I've had if I didn't have an opportunity to really focus on my addiction and take care of that and uh, focus on getting my education and doing all the things that I guess I, I had always wanted to do, but never really had an opportunity to do. Um, and I've just been very blessed um, to have NJCDC in my life. 
Um, and, and Bob has always been very supportive. NJCAC has been very supportive. The staff has been very supportive in helping me accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish. Um, I've really been very blessed to have them in my corner since um, 2014. So thank you very much, Bob. And thank you everybody for letting me share. Well, thank, thank you, Josh. And, you know, I, I dare say that, that we're the one who are uh, blessed. We're blessed by, by knowing you and by really um, all benefiting from the story that you tell so, so passionately. So thank you, Josh, for taking the time to be with us this evening. I, I don't think it's any secret that this has been an extraordinarily difficult time for the city of Patterson and for the people uh, we serve. But we are very, very fortunate here in the city of Patterson to have uh, a mayor who I am privileged to call a friend who I can also, I think, say confidently is uh, one of a kind um, as he guides us through this uh, pandemic with great energy and great effectiveness. And so um, please uh, welcome uh, our friend, our mayor, uh, who will introduce ultimately our honoree probably after he says a few other words, uh, Mayor Andre Sayer. Mayor Thank you, Bob. And I wanna express my appreciation and admiration for you. And Patterson is a better city because of your leadership. And I'm a better person because of your friendship. And Tiffany Shepard, my cherished friend, is absolutely right. Food is a staple of NJCDC. And that Libby sign you have in the background is making my stomach growl. But ladies and gentlemen, with all the sacrifices we've made this year, next year we will be at the West Mount Country Club. And at this time, next year we'll be eating surf and turf. Bob, I, I, wanna, I wanna start by saying, this is part of your vision. If people can see this here, this will be the, $1.25 million makeover of Lou Costello Park. And what I'm proud of, and Mike, thank you for your leadership too. What I'm particularly proud of is you engage the neighborhood and you ask through a survey, what do you want to see Lou Costello, a premier park look like in Patterson? And the one thing that's been missing in this city, and we're proud to say for the first time, we will be able to accommodate children on the spectrum. So children with autism will have somewhere safe to safe the place to play in the city of Patterson, thanks to NJCDC and the city of Patterson is a proud partner. As you know, I prioritize this project, Bob. Every time we need a little bit more funding, we found it somewhere because our youth, quite frankly, are worth it. So go NJCDC. And I'm so glad that you showcased Miguel and Amaya and Hector because that proves that Patterson has got talent. And Tiffany and Josh, thanks for sharing your testimonies. Because if anything, this has been a year that we've been tested and we will be better and stronger as a result. And so I have the honor of introducing our honoree this evening. And what would we be without our hospital? They, they have been tested like, at, like no other time before. And I've grown to respect Kevin Slavin, the president, so much so that we have joined forces early on. Patterson made it a point to provide enough PPE to his healthcare employees, whether it's doctors, nurses, or anyone affiliated with St. Joseph's Health. And we are ready for the next wave. In fact, we just co-authored another op-ed talking about the vaccine. And it's entitled, Vaccines Don't save anyone, vaccinations do. So that is the next phase of our mission to make sure that we protect Pattersonians. And I want to also show, appropriately enough, another rendering I have. And this is a partnership with NJCDC and St. Joseph's Hospital. Josh, you talked earlier about affordable housing. Well, this partnership between NJCDC and St. Joseph's Health will provide 56 affordable housing units on Barclay Street. 10 of those units are set aside for people with special needs. What has happened in the past, or, and it's currently happening, there are homeless individuals that are seeking shelter in the emergency room at St. Joseph's Hospital. So those affordable housing units 
designated for individual special needs will address and accommodate them so that they don't have to seek shelter in an emergency room. They'll have a roof over their heads and take pride in having their own place to live. And so at this time, it is with tremendous, it was with profound pride that I introduced to you a visionary leader here in the city of Patterson, someone that, like I've stated before, I've grown to admire, and he is an ally in this war against this invisible but not invincible enemy. So please join me in providing a warm welcome to St. Joseph's President Kevin Slavin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I really appreciate all those great uh, comments. I want to thank you for your leadership and all the positive things you're doing for Patterson. As you know, we have many, many more things to do together along with Bob and his team. Um, let me thank the young people tonight for just being a great inspiration. Uh, tremendous. And Josh, you know, great to see you, my friend. Uh, I think about you from time to time. Recently, my wife and I were talking about listening to you speak, and we we decided to order some Joshua tree seeds and grow some Joshua trees. So once one gets a little higher, we'd like to bring it over to you for your apartment. Um, I'm just really honored to receive this award on behalf of the entire team at St. Joseph's, 5,000 plus employees, physicians, volunteers. It's a family, it's a team, and uh, they all deserve this, particularly our frontline employees who have gone through the first surge and are now seeing it happen again and are ready for it and ready to care for this community. But it's really our longstanding partnership with NJCDC that brings me and the St. Joseph's this great honor tonight. And Bob, I truly appreciate you and your entire team for working hand in hand with us for uh, the betterment of our community. You know, I looked at my calendar today, Bob, and uh, next Friday I will uh, finish six years here at St. Joseph's back in Patterson, which I'm very happy about, best decision I made. And I thought about, uh, as I was leaving Essex County a little over six years ago, uh, a good friend and colleague of ours, the former commissioner of human services, Jennifer Velez called me and said, when you get to Patterson, you better look up Bob Garashi because you and he are gonna do great things together. So I think Bob, you would agree, Jen was and continues to be a great visionary in our state. Um, but this relationship between St. Joseph's and NJCDC has grown over decades of collaboration and teamwork. Uh, there's no doubt that everybody virtually attending tonight, many more have witnessed Bob's in-depth knowledge and compassion and passion for uh, the Patterson community and to transform lives. Um, these qualities made Bob the first choice when we started to form the board for the Health Coalition of Passaic County years ago. He was an inaugural member of that board and still serves today. He brought his decades of understanding working in and for this city. And this experience has been a great asset as we join now in the critical work the hospital has outside our hospital walls. We move outside our hospital walls to work uh, together with partners like NJCDC and what's called the social determinants of health that really make up 85% of the health of a community. Hospitals and doctors really can only influence 15%. It's housing, transportation, food, education that make up the bulk of the health of a community. So your approach to support children, the range in age from early childhood to college age, is built on this foundation of youth development, family programs, community building, and as we heard, it includes supportive housing. So this pathway aligns great with St. Joseph's as first a mission-driven organization, and now with our new expanded mission to improve the overall health of the community. So our latest joint project to build the site that the mayor showed on Barclay Street, just one block away from the hospital, is going to be a model for the rest of the state. Um, when it came to announcing this exciting housing initiative, we received so many accolades from around the state about the partner we chose. They said, you really chose the right partner. We know that we both have this vision for enhancing and, and improving community health and wellness, and we're really proud to work with you to address these key issues. So. Also, even in these COVID relief efforts, Bob and your team work with us to ensure families have had access to community testing sites. Um, you will hear shortly that St. Joseph's will have performed our 10,000th COVID test. I think that's the most in the state. We should hit that next week. So we'd like to have a celebration and you were a big help to us to expand testing outside the hospital and help the uh, Kim Birdsall and her team with the Health Coalition of Passaic County Initiative around food insecurity. 
uh, and now vaccine readiness. So the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic reinforced this belief that healthy communities flourish when we work together. Thank you, we'll get, we'll get through this. Thank you for honoring us tonight, but more importantly for honoring and partnering with us day after day and year after year to positively impact families, advance health and improve lives in Patterson. I'm deeply honored and privileged and I wanna thank you again. Well, thank you, Kevin. We, 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 we too are deeply honored to have uh, this partnership with you uh, and that you made that decision six years ago to come back to Patterson. So we're grateful for that. And we, we are very grateful, Kevin, for the work that St. Joe's has done serving on the front lines of this pandemic. It is nothing short of extraordinary. Um, we really are thrilled to, uh, that we're able to honor you uh, this evening, as well as the 5,000 colleagues <clears throat> who um, enable St. Joe's to have the impact that it does. So, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we can't recall, uh, as we said earlier this time last year when we gathered at the Westmount Country Club, uh, where we honored Governor Phil Murphy and the uh, past and present members of our board of trustees. And at that event, um, we were able to serenade Governor Murphy with the song that has become Patterson's anthem, uh, thanks to the movie about Patterson's Eastside High School starring Morgan Freeman, Lean On Me. Uh, and so tonight, we'd like to show you that special performance uh, when we celebrated our milestone 25th anniversary, in part by our mayor serenading our governor. Let's take a look. Blessedly, it wasn't too long of a clip of Mayor Saya uh, singing. So um, that was really a great night and it, it really was a fun performance. Next year, we'll be doing it again. Um, and as I said, while we wish that we could be gathered uh, safely um, at Westmount tonight, um, seeing each other in person, we are uh, grateful for everyone's participation mm -hmm. Uh, uh, via Zoom. Um, we're especially grateful to tonight's sponsors and I'd like to welcome one of them now, uh, Daniel Randall. Um, Daniel is from the Federal Home Loan Bank in New York who has supported our work in so many different ways over the last uh, decade or so. Uh, and I'd like to introduce Daniel. I love that clip. That was absolutely hilarious. And um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Randall, and I am the Vice President and Community Investment Officer of the Federal Home Loan Bank of New York. And we take great pride in serving as a trusted and reliable partner to the communities that we live and work. And it's an honor to give back and to support NJCDC as they create opportunities to transform lives in Patterson and in the surrounding area. I have the great pleasure of wel welcoming back Hector Otero um, to the virtual stage to play one more song for you tonight.
<laughs> All right. Wasn't that wonderful? Thank you, Hector. And so appropriate as we're already into December. Wow. Um, friends, you know, last year's gala was extraordinary in many ways, um, as you saw in the clip that we showed. Um, but I think, I think tonight's is extraordinary uh, as well in its, in its own way. Um, you each chose to attend this virtual event after I'm sure many other virtual meetings this week, whether Zoom or WebEx, FaceTime, Skype, uh, despite the exhaustion uh, you may feel from, from the Thanksgiving holiday uh, and from this awful pandemic, despite the Zoom fatigue I think that we all have, and despite the many other ways that you could spend your free time, you made the decision to be with us here tonight to hear about the work that we are doing in response to the pandemic, to hear from our current and former program participants and to see each other. And so despite the many obstacles that lie ahead, despite the struggles I know we and those we serve will inevitably face, tonight I am grateful as I know are my colleagues for each and every one of you and for the commitment to us and the 4,000 children and families we serve each and every day. Now, earlier tonight, if our um, audio was maybe a little better, perhaps more practiced, you would have heard from the chairman of our board of trustees, Don Buckley, um, who is having a little bit of audio trouble. But I wanna acknowledge Don, and in, and in acknowledging Don, I wanna acknowledge uh, our entire board of trustees that work really hard each and every day um, to help govern this organization in a way that allows us to be, I think, an indispensable organization here in this community. So I wanna thank Don Buckley. I wanna thank all the trustees. Um, I think I've seen almost all of them on tonight. I saw uh, Lori Griffa and uh, Martin Vergara, uh, David Berninger, Tony Kosha, um, Eric DeLeo, Rob Garrison, uh, Kenyatta Stewart. I hope I'm not missing anybody else. If I am, my apologies. And I'm sure that Valerie will put it in the chat box, but I think I've hopefully gotten all of you who are in attendance. Thank you to the board <clears throat> for all you do. And a very special thank you to Bob DeLeo, um, who served as chairman of this board for um, many years and who is just an incredible benefactor um, uh, and cares so deeply about the work we do, but more importantly, cares deeply about the people of this great city. So thank you to Bob and to your wonderful family. Um, it's been a good night. I'm proud to tell you that as a result of your generosity tonight, we have raised in excess of $200,000, which will allow us to <clears throat> continue to further our work here in the city of Patterson. So um, I leave you as do my colleagues uh, and I very, very grateful, very, very thankful. Next year, it's the West Mountain Country Club. I promise you, right, Mayor? And um, with that, I say good night, be safe and be well. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>